Have you ever heard that expression, sugar makes you fat, fat makes you thin? Did that make any sense to you? It doesn't sound like it makes any sense. So in this video, I'm going to pick into that statement and try and see if it actually does make any sense or not. So welcome to Shape Fixer. I'm Andrew. I'm a nutritionist. I'm a biologist. I'm a trained biochemist. I'm also an athlete and I have had my issues with weight in the past. I was obese. I had heart problems and I just thought it was age. And now I'm 60 and I have no issues like that. I'm not on any medication for anything and I have lost 45 pounds. So what is this about sugar and fat? We are told that to stay healthy, we need to eat a certain amount of carbohydrates, particularly unprocessed carbohydrates and starches. And we've been told this since the late 1970s and yet the Levels of obesity in Western society are just increasing all the time. And so are the levels of diabetes, which is a result of a sugar problem caused by overconsumption of carbohydrates, which are glucose, and obesity and diabetes are often linked. Now, not always, okay? You can be thin and have diabetes. So probably 5% five, five of type 2 diabetics are actually thin, but most are obese. And then, of course, linked to that, heart issues. So how is it possible that I lost 45 pounds by cutting carbohydrates out of my diet completely, pretty much? I mean, you know, there are occasions where there's an exception and increasing my fat intake. My mother's in her 90s and she's lost about 35 pounds and gone off all the medications she used to be on. And she my wife has lost weight, my sister's lost weight, my clients are all losing weight, and thousands of people who follow this channel have commented how this has changed their health too. So, how can sugar make you fat, and how on earth can fat make you thin? Right, so, sugar, very briefly, glucose, which is in sugar, obviously. Sugar is half glucose and half fructose, and the fructose part of it gets converted to glucose in your body, so it all ends up as glucose anyway. Starch is glucose, that's what it is. Now it might come in a potato which has some other stuff in it, but it's mostly glucose, so it's sugar. Okay, carbohydrate is a chemical word for sugar. Right, when you eat sugar, your insulin level goes up because insulin is needed to get that sugar out of the blood into the cells for burning because sugar is toxic over certain levels in your blood and we eat too much of it. So your insulin goes up and the more sugar you eat or the more carbohydrates you eat, the more your insulin goes up and the more the sugar gets packed into your cells. Then your cells stop accepting it because they're full. So something else has to happen to the sugar that you're still eating, the glucose, the starch. So your liver converts it to something called glycogen, which is kind of animal starch and it gets packed into the muscles and into the liver as a store, so that when your cells have finished burning what they've got, then they receive more sugar from the glycogen and you work it out that way. But we eat it again and again and again and our glycogen, glycogen stores are full. So now there's still too much sugar. So in desperation, you turn it into fat, into body fat, which then gets pushed into the fat cells adipocytes, if you want a geeky name for it. These are just cells that store fat. And they get, they swell up, they get full, so they make new cells, which can take some more fat, and we get bigger and bigger and bigger, and we get fatter and fatter and fatter, because we are eating carbohydrates all the time, and we are completely overdosing on glucose. Now, you would think that if that fat is a way of storing it so we can burn it later, a, why don't we just burn it off again? And B, why do we get hungry? It doesn't really make sense that you can be so full of fuel and yet feel terrible and exhausted and grumpy and dizzy and lightheaded and want to eat. How does that work? Right, park that. Fat, what does fat do? When you eat fat, your body converts it to ketones, which go into your cell and burn the same way that glucose does, all right? When you have too many ketones, your liver does a similar thing, puts the extra fat 
into the fat cells waiting to be burned. So that sounds more or less the same, except that there's no insulin involved. You don't need insulin to send the fat into your fat into your muscles for burning. That all just happens without insulin. The key problem here is that insulin prevents fat burning. So when you are on a diet of carbohydrates, or even if it's a mixed diet where you eat a lot of carbohydrates, because those sugars in the carbohydrate need insulin in the blood to be able to pro process and get transported into the cells, your insulin level goes up, blocks the ability of your body to burn the fat that's in your fat cells. So now you can see what happens here. You, you use up the, the sugar and then you get tired because you've got no energy left, even though you have a big energy store in your fat cells. You can't, you can't burn it, so you go and eat more. And what do you eat more of? Carbohydrates, because that gives you the energy you need, because you can't burn the fat. Also, because you like carbohydrates, and you're addicted to the sugar, and that's another story. So you just, get, you just don't lose weight. If you eat fat, and you don't eat carbohydrates, then you don't have an increase in insulin, and there's nothing to stop you burning the fat that's in your fat cells, when you're not eating. So you can go a long time between meals and you can just burn the fat. So if you want to lose weight, you have to stop eating carbohydrates. You don't need them because you can burn fat. Especially if you're overweight, then there it is. That's your energy store. You'll be fine. If once your body is adapted and you're used to not eating carbohydrates, okay, so now you're just burning fat all the time, you eat lots of fat in your diet, and you're fine, you will lose weight because in the absence of insulin, okay, first point, in the absence of insulin, you at least can burn fat. But there's another thing that, in, that insulin messes up. There is a system that your fat cells, that layer of adipose tissue with the just below your skin layer that hangs on to all that extra fat for you, which is why you balloon up all over the place when you get overweight, those cells are very finely programmed. The moment they are filled with fat to send out, release a hormone called leptin, which tells you to stop eating. And it's very difficult to eat when your leptin goes up because you just completely lose interest in food. It's just like, the idea of eating almost makes you nauseous. It's like, no, I'm full. I just, I'm not hungry. Just please, I don't want to eat. Not a big stretch stomach full. Just a, boof, really? Because your body is telling you, listen, we've got fat here, spare. So our energy is fine. Please don't eat. Just go and find something else to do. So you don't get fat. So eating fat, as long as you're not eating sugar, makes you thin because the very fat that you store in your fat cells sends out a hormone to make you stop eating. So you won't overeat. You can't overeat when you're eating a high fat diet because you just don't want to. It's just horrible. That is how fat makes you thin. Sugar makes you fat because it makes you eat way more than you need and keep eating. And it stops you from burning the fat that you already have. How many people do you see? I see them all the time. I go to the gym and I see a lot of overweight people trying really hard on the treadmill, on the machines. The doctors have probably told them to go and do it because they're at risk of heart attack or they're pre-diabetic. And you see them working really hard and sweating and you just know that they're going home and having a sandwich or a bowl of pasta or cereals for breakfast in the morning or fruit, lots of fruit because they've been told that fruit is good for you. And everything they eat has got sugar in it. They're not burning off that fat. They're not going to. You, they can't. It's impossible. So fat does make you thin. Sugar does make you fat. Here's a book, Eat Fat, Get Thin. Here's a book called Fat Chance. Here's another one called The Big Fat Surprise, or maybe it's The Big Fat Surprise. These are excellent books written by medical researchers, doctors, people who quote an awful lot of science they are excellent books. I'm going to link them down here if you're interested in reading any of them. I think most of these people, do all of them, or at least two of them do, have 
YouTube channels. I'm not in, I'm not a researcher. Okay, I I study. I don't do research. Research is finding out new stuff. I don't do. I don't find out new stuff. I'm not doing experiments. I'm doing. I'm studying. Um, so if you really want to cut through all the nonsense and understand on a very basic level how all this works, subscribe to this channel. Watch some of our other videos. I'm going to pin a few below here that I think will probably help you understand this a bit more if you want to and take control of your own life and don't rely on medication because most of the things that happen to you as you get older are diet related and you cannot fix a bad diet with medication. Okay, you can take the medication to control your symptoms for a period but you need to f address the underlying issue and that is usually your nutrition. Thank you for your time. Please subscribe to the channel and I look forward to you. Seeing you on my next video.